Hi there, saints. I come to you today with some comfort food to comfort God's people. And this is a revelation that the Lord give me, give, has given me based on dreams and visions recently. And I'm going to share this with you to com bring comfort to your soul. And first, before I get started, I just need to uh, share a couple scriptures with you just to remind everyone that the signs in the heavens are for the Lord. Now, of course, as Christians, we do not worship the sun, moon, and stars. We look at them as signs because the Lord God spoke to us in his word. He said in Genesis 1.14, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years okay and the and the lord jesus also told us in many passages in the new testament in matthew and luke and mark that we're going to see signs in the heavens and in the sun and the moon and the stars okay and also in romans chapter 1 it says for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and godhead so that they are without excuse in other words the lord is speaking here about his creation including the heavens that when when we see those things we are without excuse in realizing that it, we have a creator who created those things for us. And it says in Psalm 19, 1, that the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Praise God. So what happened was, on March 11th, 2015, I had a vision of of the waning moon this is kind of what it looked like and so what happened was I'd gotten up in the middle of the night and then I got back in bed and right as I closed my eyes the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said what do you see and then all of a sudden I saw this quick vision of of what you're seeing there this is pretty much what it looked like except for the moon here was brighter than that it was it was pretty bright and so um, when I saw that, I said, what is it? And then the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, an ancient secret, an ancient promise. And so I, I started praying to the Lord about this and trying to get understanding of what he was trying to show me. And then on March 15th, I had this dream. And in the dream, there was a man who was a messenger of the Lord, and his name was Zephaniah. And Zephaniah means Yahweh has hidden. And he was preparing a special meal for me, or a special dish for me. And it was uh, made of um, special potatoes. And so, you know, to me, potatoes are comfort food. I don't know about you guys, but I love potatoes. There's nothing better than a big hot buttery baked potato with sour cream that is comfort food to me and so I showed him the types of potatoes uh, you know that he could use for the dish and there were three types that he was going to use in the dish and there was a woman there who was helping me and so I was um, you know peeling the potatoes and as I was peeling the potatoes I was um, getting to part of the potato that I thought should be thrown away. And Zephaniah said, no, that's the best part. Don't throw that away. And and so what, what the Lord was saying in the dream is that he's going to make some comfort food and some things that I'm, he's going to show me might be something that I might tend to disregard or to ignore, but not to throw it away to pay attention because it was going to consist of some things that I wouldn't expect. And so I had the feeling that this comfort food was like a, a, a beautiful, complex French dish. And, you know, c French food is considered to be very complex and rich. And, um, and that's why the Lord was conveying, you know, that the, the comfort food, the revelation, was going to be complex and rich, just like French food. And so, um, you know, Zephaniah, meaning Yahweh is hidden. So he was saying through that name that, you know, um, that God has hidden mysteries, you know, like the Holy Spirit had spoken to me in that other vision. 
that there's an ancient secret and an ancient promise. Okay, and I believe he's talking about the rapture because it is a secret and it is a promise. Because we know that in in um, 1 Thessalonians 4, chapter 18, after Paul was giving the revelation of the rapture to the church at Thessalonica, he told them, wherefore, comfort one another with these words. He said to comfort them. And so also, you know, the name Zephaniah, if you read the book of Zephaniah, you'll notice that in chapter 2, verse 3, uh, it, he says, Seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment seek righteousness seek meekness it may be ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger so being hidden in Christ and being hidden is speaking also about the rapture and so there's the, all these multiple layers of meaning in these things that the Lord was showing me and he was trying to say don't disregard things that could be important. So really, you know, I've been trying to pay attention to everything and to really pray and seek the Lord and look at these scriptures and, and try to gain understanding by the Spirit of the Lord what he's trying to show me. And so what he was showing me in this is that there's there were layers to this revelation. And as I was studying about the moon and what he was trying to say about that, of course, we know that we just had a full eclipse of the sun where the moon went in front of the sun. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute, how that's another layer of the revelation. And also we have the blood moons that are happening, four of them consecutively in the Lord's feast days in 2014 and 2015. And I believe that those are uh, fulfilling Bible prophecy. And so um, the Lord was ministering to me how the moon symbolizes the church, how it symbolizes the bride of Christ, because, you know, Christ, of course, is the light of the world, <clears throat> which is the sun. Okay, the sun is speaking of also the sun of righteousness. That's in Malachi 4 2. You know, um, the Lord uses the these symbols in the the heavens to tell a story and so we're not worshiping these things that's what I, I want to get across to you guys we're not worshiping these things but we're looking at the message that the Lord is giving us how the son of righteousness he's the light of the world and how we're the lesser light in the world the moon and the moon is is reflecting off of the sun Okay, also it says in Songs, Song of Solomon 6.10, how the Shulamite, who is a type of the Bride of Christ, is fair as the moon, is as fair as the moon. And that mean, that word there means white, uh, to be or to become white. So it's just amazing revelation that the Lord's been giving me. And so um, as I was seeking the Lord about this and trying to understand, you know, what are you showing me, Lord? He, he was talking about how, you know, we, we're represented um, by the moon in this, in symbology and how this, what I saw here was the waning moon, okay? And I was looking at the schedule of the moon because it was so amazing. I, I, I went out my door early in the morning. I get up really early. I take my dog out like 6 a.m. or so, and the moon was in the um you know the waning uh phase here and so what i was seeing after that right outside my door here was the waning gibbous moon and the waning crescent these days now it was much brighter than this, this these images are pretty dark what i saw of course was much brighter it was more like this this is how it looked in my vision and also in the sky so the moon waning, that means it, it was leaving, okay? This is talking about the bride is going to be leaving very, very soon. The bride is going to be leaving. This is what the Lord was talking to me about um, in, the, in the vision. But then there's another layer to it. Okay, and this is what's this is what was dropped into my spirit when I was seeking the Lord about this this morning about the comfort food that he was trying to show me through the dream you know not to not to disregard anything and so what he was saying is that this also what I saw in the vision also uh, looks like it looked like this the eclipse so it was like a dual meaning it had a layered meaning 
And so what he was saying with with the eclipse is even more amazing. Okay, so now this eclipse, which was the new moon going right in front of the sun, was happened on March 20th. Now it was only seen in the northern hemisphere. Okay which is right he represented right here mostly uh, in this red section and then you know as it goes out it was seen as a partial eclipse but it was a total eclipse in the nor northern hemisphere okay um, and and what's so amazing about that is that a total uh, solar eclipse can only be seen on average every 360 years at any place on earth so the, it's a very rare event. Okay, that means for, it's going to be another 360 years before there will be a total solar eclipse uh, that can be seen at any place on Earth. That's that's what this is saying. And this now this is um, uh, timeanddate.com. Okay, so you might want to verify that information. I'm just read, reading you what it what it says on this website, but I thought that was very interesting. But what the Holy Spirit started to minister to me about this about this uh, total solar eclipse, and you'll see in this picture how, um, you know, when it, actually, no, that's not the one. There's one where it's in, totally in front, where the moon is totally in front of the sun, and maybe I didn't bring that picture up. But what the Lord was ministering to me is when the, when the moon which represents the Bride of Christ was standing directly in front of the Sun it's talking about the literal appearing of the Lord where we're going to be caught up to meet him and we're going to stand in front of him and the reason why it was only seen in the northern hemisphere is because the Lord was saying that those who were in the north are in darkness they need to wake up and it says in Jeremiah 3:12, it says, "Go and proclaim these words toward the north, and say, Return, thou backsliding Israel, saith the Lord, and I will not cause mine anger to fall upon you, for I am merciful, saith the Lord, and will not keep anger forever." So the north in Scripture is representing those who are in darkness, those who are asleep, those who are in a, who are backsliding, those who are away from the Lord. That's what this whole sign was about, you guys. And to further um, bolster that, Zechariah 2.6, Ho, ho, come forth and flee from the land of the north, saith the Lord. For I have spread you abroad as the four winds of the heaven, saith the Lord. See, in Hebrew thought, um, the east is where knowledge and understanding is. That's where the Lord is going to come from, the east. Okay, the north in scripture is considered the land of, of, you know, that's where all the judgment comes from. That's where the apostate people go. That's where those who are in darkness are. And that's why this eclipse that was seen only in the northern hemisphere, the Lord was showing that those who were in the north, are, are their eyes are closed. They're in darkness. They don't understand. And there, there is a huge, huge section of the church who does not understand that the Lord is coming and that the Bride of Christ is going to be caught up and is going to stand before the Son of Man. And it's coming soon, much sooner than people realize. All throughout Scripture, the Lord says he comes as a thief and as a, and as a snare. And people are caught off guard. And that's why he sends his messengers forth to proclaim these things. And yes, the Lord uses the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. That's why he uses these things. And, and it's for those who do not want to humble themselves before God and get before him and seek him. And there are even pastors who I love who are, who are declaring that the blood moons are nothing. Oh, don't pay attention to it. They're wrong. They're wrong. They're wrong. They're wrong. Have they even sought the Lord and asked him? I bet they have not. Otherwise, they would have heard from the Lord and he would have told them that they are definitely a sign from him. Because the Lord said that he was going to speak through the sun and the moon and the stars in these end times. And so, I hope that you guys understand this revelation. It was, it was 
you know, deep revelation. It was complex, just like the Lord said it would be in the dream. And that it, but it's comfort food for His people to know that He is coming, and the Bride of Christ is going to be standing before the the God of Glory very soon. So get ready, saints. The Lord is coming. He's been showing everyone that He's coming. Those who are seeking Him, He's been showing that He's coming. We're all looking for Him. And He's trying to get the people to wake up. And I just, my heart just grieves for those who just don't get it. They just won't see it. God have mercy on them. Look up, saints. Be comforted. Comfort one another with the words of, that the Lord's coming soon. God bless you.